Hello, this is Dr. Corey Ehrman, Senior Pastor of River Church in West Palm Beach, Florida. Welcome to Revival TV. I'm believing that God's gonna touch you through the program with salvation, healing, deliverance, and baptism in the Holy Ghost, amen. We also wanna invite you to come and be with us at the church. Visit our website, riverwpb.com for all the details. We have powerful children's and youth ministry. We have an accredited Bible school. We can train you for the ministry for revival. It's gonna be awesome. God is moving at the church powerfully. We wanna invite you to come and be a part of it. And once again, thank you for joining the broadcast. Enjoy the program. you about the power to make wealth i want to just continue because kind of i've kind of been doing this what i do on sunday mornings i kind of pick up on it sunday night as well before we receive our offering this evening you know when you see in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 then god said let us make men in our image in our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. There are a lot of creeps on the earth. There's a lot of creeps. Most of them are in government, but there are a lot of creeps. But anyways, but we have authority over the earth realm. We have authority over the earth realm. Dominion. Everyone say dominion. So if, you, if you, somebody comes in, are you one of them dominionists? I don't know what a dominionist, but I just know that the blessing of the Lord gives us dominion. You know, I don't know what that is. Somebody asked me, are you one of them dominionists? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't answer those questions. I usually answer the question with a question, what do you mean by a dominionist? You know, you one of them Pentecostals? Uh, what do you mean? You one of them charismatics? What do you mean by that? Because I don't know what their concept of Pentecostal or charismatic is. It could be a crazymatic. And I don't want to just say yes because I don't know what they think it is. But anyways, we do have dominion. Come on, we say we have, we have dominion. And that's actually what was lost. Dominion was what was lost in the fall of man. We didn't lose a religion. We lost dominion. We lost the ability to walk in authority and dominion over the earth realm. See, the earth realm was given to Adam, the the. The title deed of the earth was given to Adam. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And, but he gave the title deed, or he gave, he basically leased to Adam for 6,000 years. Man has a lease, and the lease is going to run out. When the lease runs out, the master will come to live in the house. That's the thousand-year millennial reign of Christ. He's coming back a second time. But the, there was a lease given, and of course... The devil came and he's a squatter. You know, he, he took over the lease. He tricked Adam and Eve to let him in as a thief. And he has taken over the lease. And of course, mankind has lost dominion. Now, I say mankind because we're not just mankind. The believers are God kind. Yes. Mankind has lost dominion. The believers, God kind has dominion restored according to Romans 5, 17. Those who have received the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness will rule and reign in this life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So the reign, the rule, the dominion has been restored through Jesus Christ. That's how we can cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, exercise authority over sickness and disease. Amen. And we can exercise authority also over money because money is in the earth realm. It's natural. We have... Authority, that's how you could see that's Jesus exercised dominion, not only over the storm, but he exercised dominion over the five loaves and the two fish. He exercised dominion over the fish by putting a coin in the fish's mouth. You see, he exercised, he turned the water into wine because he exercised dominion over the earth realm. We can exercise dominion over the earth realm. Hallelujah. 
and the enemy tries to hide this from the church so the church doesn't understand that they have access to the power to make wealth. Now, in verse 26, Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our image. And then in 27, let us create, or God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Dominion. And the word blessing, it's a very interesting word. In the Hebrew, it's the word baruch. Barak. It means to kneel before or to bow before. So if you read it in the literal sense, it says God kneeled before or bowed before Adam. But of course, there's an understood meaning. Why do you kneel before or bow before someone? Now, we don't necessarily do that now in the Western culture, but you come from other cultures like our culture. We, you know, we bow to kiss the hand of our elders and touch our foreheads. So if you can put me on the camera here, maybe. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. That's how we honor our elders. It's, it's to bow and to honor. And so when you lower yourself, you're raising the other one up. That's what honor is. Right? So basically God honored Adam. Authorized him. So the blessing is the Lord crowning you with glory and honor. And you walk in dominion and power and authority. Adam had that dominion, power, and authority, but he was tricked into bowing to Lucifer through deception. So how does the enemy gain advantage over the believer? It's through deception. So that's why all these false doctrines and deceiving doctrines of devils and that come through deceiving spirits into the church, one of them is the poverty doctrine. Mm -hmm. The teaching that, you know, poverty is a virtue. You don't want money. It's dirty. It's filthy lucre. Don't touch money. And then guess what happens? Then the devil has it all. And the people serving him have it all. And they finance their wicked and demonic agendas while the church has to go have brownie sales to pay the light bill. <coughs> We've been told to stay out of business. We've been taught to stay out of government. That's why we do Kingdom Business Fellowship here, because we're empowering Christians to build kingdom businesses and prosper. Amen. You don't want to miss Tuesday night. Miguel Delgado is going to come. Six years ago, he had $200 in his pocket. Now he's running a company that valued over $100 million. So I think you should probably come and hear from him and have him ha lay hands on you. And he was just like you. With $200 in his pocket, he had been in sales he was kind of had left because he was burned out and he was sitting in a service crying out to the Lord and the Lord spoke to him. He said, will you receive what I give you? I've offered to others. They didn't receive it. And then he received it and the Lord dropped an idea in him, connected him with another person, got into business, built this company now, you know. And so why not you? Why can't God do something? The only thing that qualified him was he just made a deal with the Lord. Lord, if you would just use me, I will fund the end time harvest. I'll build it. Because he had been around other companies that were run by Christians, but he saw the money taking them out. And, and so he was just saying, Lord, if you'll bless me, it won't distract me. Now, you can make that promise. You'll be tested in it. He'll be tested. Everybody will be tested. So you have to stay the course. But this word, let us make man in our image, is the same word that's used in Deuteronomy 8.18 where it says, do not forget the Lord your God. You know, when you've been blessed, don't say that it is the might of my, my own hand that has gotten me this wealth. Do not forget the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to make wealth. So it's a little bit different than creating wealth, making and, and there's a lot of discussion because two different words are used. Let us make man and then God created man. 
Well, man was made from the earth, but God created him in his spirit. So it was the earth realm and the, the heavenly realm combined in Adam. And that's exactly what we see in the second Adam, Jesus. 100% man, 100% God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word, the eternal word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. And today we are the word that's made flesh. We are living epistles. We are living Bibles. When the word is alive in us and we live the word, the, word, we are, the living word is manifested in our lives. And when we take God's word and we live it, we manifest it. Amen. Amen. And then the, the power of the word of God begins to produce results. When you believe it, when you speak it, when you do it, the word becomes alive. Otherwise, it's just dead letter in a book. But then when you live it, when you breathe it, when you believe it, you speak it, you're walking out, it becomes alive. And the word of God is alive, quick and powerful. Hallelujah. It's a, it, this thing is powerful. So there's power in the word to create. So man was made from the earth. From dust you came, to dust you shall return, physical body. But on, when God breathed it into his nostrils, the breath of life, he became a living soul. He, and, a, and a spirit was created in him. So, and the word that's used for power to make wealth is the word make. That means, obviously, we don't have the ability to create wealth. Like you can't say it's just a money bee. Do you understand me? But... Obviously, there's the miraculous working of God where, where literally money can be created, like he created money in the fish's mouth. Do you understand me? But most of the time, it's going to be God giving you the anointing and the strategy to make wealth. You're going to have to produce. You're going to have to do something. And so, and you look at people in the world, I mean... They don't know these things, but they go out there, they work hard, and they produce. And I was talking about the guy this morning, you know. <laughs> the, the toilet brush king. He invented, I guess, a special kind of a toilet brush, and he made hundreds of millions of dollars with a crappy idea. But he did. Amen. So, you know. Why can't God give you an idea if you make yourself available? And then, you know, Mr. George, what are you making on those videos now? What? Just tell me. It's okay. This month. $8,000. Come here, tell the story. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Listen to this. Have you seen his Mr. George videos? Who's seen his Mr. George videos? T tell us when this all started, like a couple of months ago. Tell us the whole thing. So, yeah, in uh, October, I believe, um, I had got an email from Facebook saying they wanted me to add my bank account info to pay me $95. I was like, uh, I had to check out the email, the company, to make sure it wasn't a scam. And then... Uh, I had a bank account that didn't have any money in it, so I'm like, I'm going to give it a shot. So I added my bank account. About a week later, <clears throat> the money hit. So I was like, all right, that's pretty cool, 95 bucks. <laughs> and at the time, you know, our business was, we were in a little dip, I would say, and uh, things were tight. And uh, so I kept posting uh, on my Facebook Reels. At the time, I had maybe 800 followers. And... Um, I started posting of our living water machine. I post every day about my keto transformation. And uh, I was having a pretty rough day one day, and I just said, you know what, these stupid water videos aren't doing anything. <laughs> and then a couple of days later, one of those water videos went viral, two million views. I had hundreds of comments. So then through the, the holidays, um, we sold about 10 water machines in, a week, in two weeks. So God turned all that around right away. And then my following jumped up from 800 to 80,000 now. And so more people are seeing it. And 
I was driving to church, and there was one, there's this funny guy that I watched his, uh, his podcast, and he's just sharing how people should go to work and enjoy their job and, and not always be in, you know, strife or just, you know, not going, wanting to go do what they want to do. So he makes fun of his workers, and he picks up the phone and calls a boss that his name's Mr. George. And he's, like, basically telling on his workers that they're taking a too, lunch, too long of a lunch break or whatever. So it's funny. His voice is funny. He's a Mexican guy. So I took his voice and put it on a funny video one day, and it went viral. 24 million views. So everybody started calling me Mr. George on Facebook. <laughs> Mr. George. And then, but not only that, like, there's people reaching out because they see that uh, you know, I come to church and I'm about God, ketones, health, wealth. And uh, so I end up getting people saved through Facebook. I'm ministering to people and people are reaching out that they are struggling with, you know, all kinds of things. And so it's turned into another little <laughs> ministry as well. And then, and so um, from that 24 million uh, views, the, the money went from, $95 to $400 to $600 to $1,000 to $1,200 to $1,600. And then the last time I told you was 12. And then I showed my wife an email that came through and it said $8,000 are coming in this month. And that's just this week, 8,000. This month. This month, $8,000 from just those. 1,200 to 8,000. 1,200 to 8,000 from just, from just like literally 10 second video six to 10 second video and he's sleeping and making money yeah. and so it takes me about five seconds or 10 seconds to make a video about a minute and then some of them are pretty funny so pretty i just funny. wonder these people are the so then, stupidest people on the planet yeah how do you take a dump truck and drive it into a lake <laughs> mr george so, yeah. how much you pay for that got 20 dollars 20 20 and so it's, it's stupid but it is and people like to laugh and i just got a message just now and she's and the lady said thank you for your videos for the love of god and keep posting and then now people are actually sending me videos to add the voice so i don't go <laughs> have to go look for them, I just add them <laughs> them, making my job a lot easier so, can you bring me down just a tiny bit on the house it's, thank you it's it's been amazing and god <laughs> hallelujah it all because yeah wow eight thousand bucks oh so the, the way that happened i wasn't earning off those videos and i was coming here and me and madison were riding the church and I'm like, why am I not getting paid on these videos? I'm like, Madison, how do I get, help me learn, I mean, help me understand why I'm not getting paid on here. And, she's just and that, looking at me. And she's 16. Yeah. And so we turn right there and I'm like, I just asked the Holy Spirit, I'm like, how do I earn off these Mr. George videos? And I just heard screen record. So I started screen record, recording a, a funny video and then I add the voice, cut out the watermark, and I started getting paid for them. Wow. That's amazing. We're so glad you're joining Revival TV broadcast today. We hope that you're being blessed. And we want to invite you to become a financial partner with the ministry by sowing into the harvest, sowing into revival. If you will go to riverwpb.com give, you'll be able to find all the different ways of giving and all the information is there for you. We want to invite you to pray about it, sow into the harvest, sow into souls, and we pray that God will bless you for your generous gift to the ministry. Thank you once again for your generosity and thank you for joining the broadcast. It's only the beginning. I mean, just think about that. A, a silly idea could make you so much money. Create wealth. Hallelujah. Now everybody's going to try it. But it's not going to work for them because they got to have the anointing. And they got to have a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. So God's going to give you strategies to make wealth. So he's basically making wealth right now. He's creating some wealth for the family. It's not that much right now, but hey, it's better than nothing. Went from $95 to $8,000. Who could use an extra $8,000 a month? Of course you could. Amen. So, so think about that. Amen. Praise God. So why can't God give you an idea? You know, a Holy Ghost hamburger idea. Imagine the guy that invented a hamburger. I mean, come on. So, so the power to make wealth, this is the anointing, the ability. 
wisdom, strategy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now look at Proverbs chapter 22, verses 6 and 7. I know verse 6 is quoted a lot, and verse 7 is also quoted a lot, but these are actually connected. Verse 6 says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from his ways. But then right after that, it says, the rich rule over the poor, the borrower is a slave to the lender. So is it possible, which, of course, I'm, I'm telling you, that's exactly what God's trying to do. God's trying to teach us and tell us to train up our ch- children to think, to understand that rich rule over the poor and borrower is a slave to the lender. So not to, to have a prosperity mindset, teach our children young. You know, I had to renew my mind. I had to get all kinds of stinking thinking out of my head. But my daughter didn't have to because she didn't grow up in a household where we we were always talking about lack and how hard it was and we had to borrow more money and the credit card is up to the limit. You know, I mean, you know, we were an immigrant family. You know, my parents worked two jobs. I mean, we were well off in Turkey, but we had the military coup and we lost everything. And my dad had to come here, start from scratch. Here's a man with a business degree, had to come to America, start washing dishes in a restaurant. But pretty soon, he was running the restaurant in a few months. But, I mean, we had to start from scratch as an immigrant family. So my teen, teenage years were from 13, you know, 12 and a half was when I came. So from 13, my teenage years to 18 was a lot of struggle. Lack, you know, we couldn't afford it. I always heard, we can't afford this. We can't afford that. We can't afford this. It's too expensive. It's too, too expensive. We can't have it. We can't afford it. So you grow up that way. You grow up always in debt. You know, and so it does something for you. Then I went to college, had to get all these student loans. Even though I had a scholarship, I had to get a whole bunch of student loans still. And then you graduate with all these $50,000 worth of student loans. Now you got to pay off all these loans. Now you can't go chase after your dreams. And it's literally slavery. And that's actually what's happened with higher education in America. It's become a business. It's, not all, it's no longer really education. It's really just a business. People are graduating with stupid degrees in gender studies and underwater basket weaving. And then with $100,000 in debt, and now they're a slave. Bunch of stupid degrees that are given. Now, I mean, obviously, if you're getting a degree, you know, something that is going to really empower you with a skill, a technical skill, then you can, you know, make a good career. But outside of that, most, most of them, They got a college degree. They're working at Starbucks because they got a degree in sociology and they're a barista now. I mean, what the heck? I mean, so what are they going to do? And they got to pay off all these student loans for the next 20 years. Now they're a slave. And, And the whole system is rigged. And it's become that way. It's rigged. And they actually rigged it. The whole globalist Way back, going back to the 50s, 60s, they got a hold of education and, and, and the elite that run all the corporations and stuff, they work together to just say, we need to create a working class, a peasant class. It's like the Hunger Games. You know, you got the capital with the elite and everybody's a bunch of peasant class. That's the whole idea, really, honestly. The system is designed that way. So, and then that's what they're training the children in the schools to think that way. You need to just study hard, memorize all this garbage you don't need just so you can just get, get a job and survive and pay bills or pay your debts or whatever. And so we need to start training our children with a prosperity mindset, put the anointing on them, train them at a young age to be, to be entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial and, and to not be a worker mentality, but to really be a business owner and to, to, to learn to invest, to learn to study out these things. That means you have to also renew your mind and study these things out and break the mindset, to break the, the, break the cycle of poverty and lack in your family. I feel very strongly about this. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Because the rich rule over the poor, and the word rule means dominion, reign, and to subdue. Aren't we the, supposed to be the ones ruling? And doesn't the Bible tell us that we will, the blessing of the Lord makes us rich? And that means the blessing of the Lord that makes us rich is also the blessing that gives us dominion. 
So the blessing, wealth, and dominion, they're all tied together. And it comes from heaven. It's the heavenly empowerment of the Lord. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know this one, Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks, so is he. So you've got to think. I read a book a long, long time ago, and it's just a secular book, Think and Grow Rich. Back in the 90s, I, re I used to read, you know, I think it was Napoleon Hill, you know, Think and Grow Rich. I mean, they were teaching you how to have a, you know, and then the rich dad, poor dad book. You got to read these things, you know, develop your mind because it really is in your mind. You have to break that poverty mindset. It's a mentality, so you have to develop a prosperity mentality, and that's actually what 3 John 2 talks about, right? Dearly beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. Soul, that's your mind, your will, your emotions. Your soul prospers. That means your mind has to prosper. You have to have a prosperity mindset. Hello, this is Dr. Corey Ehrman. Thank you for joining the broadcast. I want to give an invitation right now. Maybe you have never given your life to Jesus. You've never made him the Lord of your life. My friend, let me ask you a question. If you were to die this very second, breathe out your last breath, are you absolutely sure beyond the shadow of any doubt that you will go to heaven? If you are not sure, I bring you good news. And I want to tell you that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of decision. God is waiting for you to make a decision. He's done all that he needs to do. Jesus died for you on the cross. He shed his blood for you. He's coming back again for you. And now you need to receive him. And if you are ready to receive him right now, I want you to just close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I repent of all my sins and I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart right now. Wash me and cleanse me. Fill me and change me. Let me never be the same again. I confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He died on the cross for me. He rose from the dead for me. He's coming back again for me. And that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you pray that prayer with me, I want to tell you very, very good news. I want to tell you that all of your sins are forgiven you right now and you are now a child of God on your way to heaven. Isn't that wonderful news? We want to hear from you. Write us and let us know if you prayed with us. We also have things that we can send to you to help you to grow in your spiritual walk. Continue to join us on the broadcast. We love you. God bless you.